Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla. It is a slightly damp Saturday morning here in Sheffield and I am going to test one pedal driving. What is it? Is it any good? You might be thinking, what does he mean test one pedal driving? It's a Tesla, don't they all do that? Well, not necessarily. There are actually three different modes that you can set your brake and regen to so that when it stops, it either stops completely when you lift off the throttle, which is one pedal, or you can have it where it acts like a um, automatic gearbox and it has a creep function, which is how I have it normally set, or you can have it like it is a manual gearbox uh, where you have completely disengaged the clutch and it's got roll. It will basically just continue to roll. So I don't really use one pedal driving and there's a couple of reasons for that. One of which is it, it just feels a little bit odd to me, especially maneuvering where you need to basically apply the throttle to slow down, right? Which feels a bit odd. So I'm going to do a bit of shunty shunty here in this car park before we go anywhere. And then we're going to have a, a meander around through the roads of Sheffield and we're going to end up at Meadowhall Shopping Centre where I'm going to use a public charger where I'm going to try <laughs> and use a public charge. If you haven't seen my The Tesla Advantage, I think I called it, video where I looked at why Tesla charging is better than other EVs, failing miserably to make Charge Play Scotland's app work, yeah, this might be the similar thing. I think this is Vend Electric. It's yet another app, yet another load of gubbins you have to carry around on your phone to be able to make charging work. We'll go and give it a try. Anyway, let's get in the car and get started. So the first thing we need to do is to change the setting. So hit the car icon at bottom left, go to pedals and steering, and there is this stopping mode menu here. If you haven't seen either of my other videos about stopping mode, go back and watch those now, but I'm going to go to hold. So as it says, maximizes range by extending regenerative braking to lower speeds and automatically blends in the brakes to hold the vehicle at a stop. Hmm let's try it so i need to back up because obviously i have got this lovely bit of council furniture in front of me so on reverse and i take my foot off the throttle and the car stops completely uh hello to uh pedal cam by the way so that you can see this so going backwards off the off the throttle and the car stops so what we're going to do is we are going to go into one of these spaces over here so i'm going to do some reverse maneuvering into a car parking space so that you can see how that actually works so we'll go out to about there now you see i've just gone onto the brake and i didn't need to now i've got to actually apply throttle here to reverse backwards slowly and as soon as i ease my foot off the <laughs> this just feels wrong as soon as i ease my foot um uh, off the throttle the car comes to a stop almost um i'm expecting it to creep because that's the way i do things normally but you can see me going backwards and then i have released yes so i took my foot off completely and the car comes to a stop that <laughs> feels unnatural it's the reversing bit let's just try that again so we'll go out forward so I want to reverse into this space. Now, I have not touched the brake this time because I was doing before I went to the brake, which I'd be doing normally. So I'm going into reverse and then I have to apply throttle to make the thing roll backwards. It's not just take your foot off the brake as I would do normally. In fact, should we just do that as a comparison? So I'm actually having to apply throttle to creep this thing backwards into this space, which, like I said, it just feels odd. And then I take my foot off and it stops so let me just show you what i would do normally so apply park so i can change the mode so i would normally have it in creep mode okay so a dab of throttle to get us going and then i take my foot off and wave it around and the car carries on creeping forward until i apply a little bit of brake to make it stop and then i go into reverse and a little bit of throttle and then it just rolls backwards and then i am easing back on the brake pedal just gently to slow the thing to a stop and for me that just feels more natural but that's maneuvering let's actually go and drive so let's go and change the mode again back to hold go into drive and let's get on with it
So again, <laughs> it just feels wrong. He is turning left because he's got a load of prisoners. Good. Right, we are going to go up the hill, I think. Yeah, yeah, we'll go up the hill and then we'll go back down the other side. So I am, um, again, I'm on the throttle, um, which is fine because we're just driving. But as I get up here in a minute, I'm then going to just come off uh, with my foot on the throttle <laughs> and the car's going to come to a stop or at least slow down. Now, of course, I'm used to it slowing down on regen. That's, that's what Tesla's all about and EVs where you have it. So off the throttle and it would stop completely. It actually does break with regen quite aggressively, which some people might like, although frankly, in a city, I'm not sure I'd necessarily want uh, that level of regen. Other people will disagree. Let me know in the comments. So we're coming up here, there is traffic stopped ahead. So I am just easing back on the throttle and the car is slowing down. And I could come off completely and yeah, it does quite aggressively come to a stop. I don't need to, I need to creep. But I am having to moderate my throttle inputs a little bit more than I would do normally on creep mode, which again, just feels wrong. It's probably not supposed to feel wrong, but <laughs> uh, yeah look I'm 46 years old I've been driving <laughs> for decades at this point and despite having another EV previously and then several plug-in hybrids this is the first car that's had one pedal driving and I'll be honest apart from when I first got it um, I haven't used it and part of the reason for that is that as you might have seen uh, the way that my property I need the other lane is laid out I reverse down my driveway and it's a downhill driveway and the problem is you have to apply the throttle to roll the thing down backwards which just feels completely freaky which is why I don't do it and that's why I've put it on to creep pretty much from the start. I've only really tested hold. So this is going to be interesting coming to the lights. I actually needed to go back onto the throttle just for a little bit to make it get to the line because it was slowing down more than I wanted it to. So again, feet off the, the uh, pedal cam can see. I am completely off the pedals now and the car has come to a stop and it's put auto hold on. Now, ordinarily I would have to push the brake pedal and then push it basically further down past the detent to make it apply the auto hold. Now I have no problem with that. Hang on, coming up on this horrible university roundabout and it really is cars flying at you, multiple lanes, they can go around it in multiple lanes and I am testing this one pedal drive mode which I'm unfamiliar with. Fun. See the suffering I do for you guys. We're still waiting. Okay, we can go now. But actually I have to go. I mean, that is one where there's a gap, but you know, stick some power down basically. Not lots of power, cause I'm a Tesla. <laughs> I've got all the power, <laughs> but put some power down to actually get through the gap. So we are going to go down the hill now toward Shalesmoor. Um, this is downhill and I've got my foot on the throttle to make it keep going. Ordinarily, I'd be... Uh, actually, no, I'd still have my foot on the throttle, wouldn't I, uh, on creep mode, because otherwise you're blending regen. But this is something that, if you don't have an EV, will feel a bit odd, where you might be thinking, I want to be coasting down here and letting engine braking slow you down. Um, you don't have engine braking, and the way that regen blends is very different. So we're coming up to a red light, and I'm easing back on the throttle. I'm easing back a lot more on the throttle. And then I'm actually applying a little bit more because otherwise it's gonna stop quicker than I want it to, but it's come to a stop and auto hold has come on. It's still strange. It really is strange. Hmm. I, look, I think I get it if you do a lot of driving in urban areas because it probably does make it easier if you're just literally on the one pedal so i i do get it but i don't know it's 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 like having to completely relearn how to do something that you've been doing for a long 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 time and i know people will say well ian that's what an ev is look at this guy where's he going um 
and it is what an EV is, and I get that, but I don't know, it just feels off. Put it back onto autopilot. If you haven't seen my city autopilot video, watch that one as well. It was really interesting. Autopilot does fabulously well on urban dual carriageways like this. Fabulously well. Obviously, the, the mode that I'm on now really doesn't matter because if it needs to slow down for traffic, it will just slow down by itself. Um, whatever mode you're in, it will stop the car where it needs to. So that's not really the issue. And again, I'm coming down here. I'm gonna turn it off just so I can do the one pedal bit myself. <laughs> I can, it's like I'm going, uh, uh, I'm slowing down too much. <laughs> <laughs> Put a bit more throttle on. Oh, no, I need to slow down more. Take it off again. I'll get used to it. I'm not sure it's for me, though. And now we go around here. This was widened a few years back at, I assume, great expense and certainly a huge amount of faff while they were doing so. But it really does allow traffic to flow now. Okay, easing back on the throttle. Let's see if we can get this on a bit smoother this time. So I'm keeping just the slightest little bit of throttle on to bring it to a stop and then off completely and there we go. So that's better, but I feel like I'm having to do a lot more thinking about it. Whereas if I'm applying pressure downwards on a brake, I absolutely know how um, much I need to be doing. Whereas doing it in reverse, where you're lifting off the throttle pedal, uh, it's a muscle memory thing, I'm sure it is. But it just feels odd. Well, feels wrong. Um, but tell me I'm an idiot in the comments if you want. That's absolutely fine. Again, easing on the throttle, which is what I'd be doing normally anyway. And then it's just this bit at the end where I'm just easing up to slow down instead of easing down that's better we're going again i can use the throttle pedal for what god designed it for here's a question right if the throttle pedal is no longer just the throttle but it's also the brake as well should we call it the throttle pedal sorry i know some of my american viewers might be saying it's the gas pedal it's not gas because this isn't a gas car um but the go pedal, the loud pedal, call it whatever you want, you know, it's the throttle. Um, but in this case, it, it's kind of both. I know that some modern trains that are one lever driving, basically push in one direction for, for power, pull back for braking. I think they call that traction and braking controller. So we almost need something similar for this. It's the throttle and brake pedal. <laughs> it all, maybe we just should call it the pedal. So here's a question. Tesla have already got it where they're trying to remove controls. So um, the latest one is they want to remove the stalks um, and just have haptic buttons or something, which honestly I think is absolutely potty. And I've seen some videos of people demonstrating why it's completely bafflingly stupid. But hey, the point is, I wonder whether we'll get to the point where they can just remove the brake pedal and just have a throttle. So a throttle and brake pedal all in one. And then you don't have a choice. It's just, this is how we drive. Because this is the level of, of advancement that Tesla really are trying to push here. That, you know, we will drive the technology forward, which changes the way that cars actually work. Um, and the way that we think about cars. Because autonomy is the thing that Elon Musk goes on about in terms of adding so much value to Tesla's share price. So with proper autonomy, I wouldn't need a steering wheel at all, or pedals. So maybe that's what they should be looking at. Take the brake pedal away completely if you really want to force us all to do one pedal driving everywhere. Because I think they want us to use autopilot everywhere, which I'm not doing now because I'm demonstrating one pedal. But um, why would we need extra pedals? 
You know, it's extra cost, it's extra faff. <laughs> Make the cars look different. He's replaced the steering wheel with the yoke, which again for me is another baffling advancement, which I know that is now an option rather than forced on you. So, you know, what about if we had the pedals a different shape or something? Anyway. Coming up to another set of lights. So easing back on the throttle, as you can see on pedal cam. And we're just coming to a stop. I'm having to just keep gently pushing my foot downwards and then pulling it back up again, which like I said, it just feels odd. And then all the way off uh, to come to a stop with auto hold. Okay. Off we go. It is a funny way of doing things. Or is that just me? Probably just me. A lot of the time it's just me and that's fine. So just while we're going along here, let's actually demonstrate how the car finds chargers. So I've got this set for level two and level three, uh, and it actually isn't showing any of the chargers at Meadow Hall. Maybe that's because they're level one. Uh, okay. Good. I ain't got a clue. <laughs> Okay, this feels a little easier now. Maybe I'm getting used to it. And then off. Maybe I'm getting used to it. It probably does make sense in this kind of environment. It probably does. Maybe I'm just too old. Uh, and all of the kids are just like, yeah, what's the problem? Of course, the real challenge for me while I'm uh, doing this particular test is that as I've got a pedal cam, this is absolutely screaming for me being able to do um, two video uh, windows within the same thing. So I'm gonna, in the edit suite, try and put pedal cam up all of the time <laughs> while I'm driving. Uh, and uh, we'll see if that works or not. If it doesn't, and I keep having to cut away to it, then uh, you know that my video editing skills are um, not where they need to be. It is funny though, driving this on a Saturday morning, because it's what, five past nine in the morning, um, this can be absolutely congested like you wouldn't believe uh, during the week. Uh, <laughs> I used to do this as a commute, by the way. So I've commuted uh, up and down this road at several points in the past, and I know just how bad it can be. Um, so getting it when it's like this and there's no one really here at all, it's actually really nice. It just makes it a lot easier. Easing up on the throttle again. Uh, yeah, I can go straight around that. I was ready to stop, and of course, by stop, I mean <laughs> keep my foot <laughs> on the pedal uh, for longer than I would do. The pedal now. I have at least got that into my head. It's not the throttle, it's the pedal. A meadow hall really should be really quiet at this time of day because it's only just opened, which is good. It's how I like it go in when it's quiet and it's actually quite pleasant don't go in when it's busy and it's called meadow hell rather than meadow hall good sign telling me where the charges are well i can tell where the charges are they're over there but of course it's how you get to them 
and there are quite a lot of chargers so this is one bank of chargers again another sign pointing the direction and another one down here this is good meadow hall this is good um look this is what we need for evs we need banks and banks and banks and banks of chargers and we've got that here and we have got uh, another big set. I think there's double the number in another car park as well. It's good because you need plenty of options because this is the ultimate in destination charging, surely. This is where you would come if you want to plug your car in. So, what we're going to do now is we are going to go over here and I think I'm going to park up next to Mr. Model 3 here. So, we're going to go around here and again i've done the brake thing <laughs> you only need to do the brake to apply reverse that's a thought i need to use the brake pedal to apply gear so by having the pedal where i don't need to do anything actually no i do i still need to have it where i have a brake to be able to change gear although i believe as i taking the Ooh, ooh, ooh. bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more, that'll do. And I've applied the brake again, <laughs> which I really don't need to do. Ugh. Right, let's go and get this app working. Okay, so straight away, having got here, the car is definitely unlocked, but it's not letting me just push on the charge flap to open it, so I'm actually gonna have to go in and do it on the menu, which is annoying. Right, right. so we plugged in and this is, uh, okay, this is a, where does it actually sound? Yeah, Vend Electric up there. So I do actually have the Vend Electric app. So let's get in and do that. Okay, we are now charging at seven, well, seven point something kilowatt. Um, that took eight minutes, okay? So eight minutes between me actually getting here and plugging this in to, it actually starting to charge so I had to go into the Vend Electric app and then log in except that it didn't like my login and I had to re-register so I once again I've got to put in all of my details um, it then wants a password but not just any password it wants it in a really faffy uh, format which you actually have to think about before you can actually get anywhere and then it's giving me a choice of payment now it says on here you know sage pay we accept payments by blah 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 but to actually get to the bit where you can pay takes a right load of old faff and then of course it then redirects me to my uh, banking app that my credit card is registered on and i have to log into that and i have to accept the payment um and eventually it starts charging and i'll be honest this for me is exactly what is wrong with public charging um it is just an absolute faff every single company has its own network it doing its own thing it's a ball ache, you know, it really is. Which is a pity because, you know, it's a big shopping mall and there's a reasonable number of charges here. And as I say, there is about double the amount in one of the other car parks. Um, so they actually have put facilities in. It's just a pain in the arse to use them. What on earth are we thinking? Anyway, that is it for this episode of Just Get a Tesla. Um, one pedal driving is something that I think I need to practice a little bit more. It still feels really unnatural. It's not something that um, I honestly think I prefer because putting my foot on the brake pedal just to stop still feels like the normal thing to do, but I accept that other people have got a different opinion on that one. Again, tell me in the comments if you think that I'm being uh, an old fuddy-duddy with gray hair in the way that I think. And then of course, I've got yet another demonstration of public charging where it's an absolute pain in the ass. But if you've got a Tesla and there's destination charging, you literally just plug in and it starts charging for you and you don't have to faff with any of this. So don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon, all of the usual yada, 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 yada. And I'll see you very soon right here on Just Get a Tesla.